Psalm 34 says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. That's what we get to do today, boast in the Lord. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Jesus, you have the precious Holy Spirit here on assignment to help unfold the word of God, the mystery of God, so that we might have help to go forward and we receive your help to learn about the kingdom way in Jesus' name, amen. The kingdom way, away in the desert, part one. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be so good. You are gonna love this. Look, the kingdom way is about the authentic way out, the way through and the way over every obstacle, every mountain, everything that would hinder you from getting to what God has for you, the dreams, the healings, the outcome, the relationships. Look, not just some fake it till you make it substitute, but the real thing, the real way, not conforming, but transforming. There was a story that John Maxwell tells so well. It's a story of two buddies out in the field. They're a bull. It's a bull and a turkey. They're hanging out. They've been best friends for quite a while. And one day the bull notices that the turkey is kind of downcast and a little bit upset. He said, what's going on? Why are you so discouraged? Why so sad? And the turkey says, ah, he says, I'm just going nowhere in life. I just wish, I just wish upon a star I could get up in that tree, at least to the second or third branch. The bull said, well... I'm hesitating, but he said, they say that if you eat my dung, there's protein and energy in my dung. If you eat some of it, maybe that'll help you. I'm just saying, that's what they tell me. So the turkey said, well, what do I got to lose? So he ate a little bit of the bull's dung. And the next thing you know, he felt kind of supercharged. So he got up to the first branch. The next day, he ate a little bit more. He got up to the second branch. Well, by the end of the week, he kept eating all that dung. He got up to the very top of that tree. And wouldn't you know it, but a hunter came along and shot the turkey dead out of the top of the tree. The moral of the story Bull dung may get you to the top, but it won't keep you there. That's kind of good, right? (laughs) Throughout this series, we're going to drill down into three important questions. Number one, what is the kingdom way? There is a kingdom way. What is it? Number two, why is it so important to you? Why is it so important to me? And number three, how do you live the kingdom way? Three important questions. Over the next four parts of this series, let's keep coming back and synchronizing our faith to the what the kingdom way is, to the why it's so important to you and me, and how we can live the kingdom way. Let's just keep coming back and synchronizing our faith to that. Let's listen to Jesus himself advising his followers on the priority of the kingdom. Listen to this, Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. All these things shall be added to you. Before we get into talking about what this kingdom of God is, notice that Jesus says to seek first the kingdom of God. Did you hear him? He said, seek first the kingdom of God. He doesn't say, seek me first. Wow. Man, this is shocking. He doesn't say, seek first God the Father. This is really a big deal. Jesus is talking to people just like you and me, struggling in the middle of a financial hardship, political unrest. Nobody can trust anyone. And the religious leaders, oh my goodness, you couldn't trust them. They were betraying the general population by being hypocrites, accusers, extortionists, and money grabbers. They were thieves. And in Matthew 6, Jesus is addressing a very discouraged people. And he says this. He says, I know you guys need food. I know you need clothing. I know you need to make a living and how to get your prayers answered. He's addressing all these issues. That's where the Lord's prayer is, is in Matthew 6. All these things Jesus is addressing. That's why he said all these things. He wasn't talking about spiritual things, but even just tangible things that you need to live through life. It's all It's all such a very non-religious talk that Jesus has given to the people. Jesus talks nothing like their religious leaders who were experts on keeping up appearances as they lied and stole from the people. 
The Jews were expecting a Messiah who would be a military political force, a real political leader. That's what they were expecting. They wanted a king, but they wanted a king according to their broken standard of living. Jesus came to be the king of our hearts, the inside of us. Jesus came to set up his throne in our hearts and our minds, in our thinking. He came to deal with our inside issues. We got inside issues, you know. We have social, political, and economic issues because we have inside issues, heart issues. God prioritizes the invisible because guess what? It steers the visible. The invisible steers the visible. When you were born into this world, you came with an inherent need, like a compulsive reflex, like this need to get, to fabricate, to create something that although we do not understand it, we instinctively know we're missing something. There's something we've lost and we so and so we try to compensate for it. Parents know this perfectly, right? They see their little angel, their precious little child, get downright nasty or become creatively persuasive at manipulating to get their own way. I, I'm telling you, parents, I've even heard them call it extortion. Four-year-old little Jeremy, he asks his dad. He says, Dad, can, can we get a kitten? And his dad said, well, I'm, I'm allergic to kittens. We can't, we can't be in the same house. I can't be in the same house as a kitten. The four-year-old, he doesn't miss a beat. And he goes like this. He says, well, dad, you, you can sleep outside. Huh? My way, my desires, my wants are preeminent. I do it my way. It's all about my way. But is it? That instinct awareness is more real than you and I know. We were all born needing the way. And even though Frank Sinatra saying, I did it my way, is that really the way? Let's just look around for a bit. There's a lot of hopelessness. There's a lot of crying, fear, anxiety, worry about the future. My way isn't the answer. Your way is a dead end. There are too many people dead with the epitaph, I did it my way. So what is the way? We all desperately need that way. We're lost without it. Face it, you're hungry for the way. You've been longing for the way. First, you've got to understand your loss. We must go back in time to the beginning of humanity in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. When they sinned against God with their act of treason, with their way, they fell from authority and dominion. Listen to this. They didn't fall from heaven they fell from authority and dominion. Think about it like this. If a bank manager loses his authority and dominion at his bank, that means they take away his keys of authority. He no longer has access into the bank or access into the vault. He's illegal to the environment of the bank with no way in any longer except to be illegal, to be a criminal. Adam and Eve fell from their authority, their access, their way in. They fell from their legal kingdom identity as possessors of the Garden of Eden, not from heaven. Remember that. They didn't fall from heaven. God had given mankind dominion and authority. That's in Genesis 1 verse 26. It was a heavenly authority to operate on earth, a kingdom authority to operate this beautiful garden of Eden. They had dominion and authority. Now remember, dominion means supreme authority, sovereignty, or control. Control. Think about that word control. Rule. They had rule over the garden. Not each other, the garden. When Adam fell, he instantly became a son without a father, a king without a kingdom. In falling from dominion and authority, he was at loss to live his true identity. He had no power to rule any longer. So humanity's loss is real. It's painful. It's death. We need a life savior, a redeemer to get us back that authority. In the meantime, the world has come up with all kinds of fake kingdoms, right? Artificial, counterfeit, replacement for God's true kingdom, trying to manufacture the whole sense of dominion and authority. 
Look, there's political kingdoms, there's military dictatorships, there's Wall Street dynasties, ethnic domains, there's entertainment empires, academic realms, we have drug cartels, we got mob families, sporting federations, religious hierarchy, we got democracies, dominions, monarchies, we've got club status, right? We all like club status. All of them are an attempt to get back what we lost in the garden, the kingdom of God, the kingdom way of life. Why even try to get some kingdom substitute going at home? Remember, people say things like this, a man's home is his castle, or guys want their man cave. What a strange phenomenon. Women want their she shed. What is that? It's an attempt to regain God's dominion and authority gift so we can have a, some little bit of a sense of feeling like we're ruling, we belong. It's like a fish out of water, needing water and trying to substitute for it. There is no substitute. To get a sense of that power, people even try to rule over people. My way, look, my opinion. That's how it starts, but then the flames grow out of control until our desire to rule over others turns even physical. Physical abuse, emotional, emotional abuse, financial, trying to rule over other people, even academic. We use intellect, criticism, scorn, comparison, words to hurt, devalue, and ultimately control the other person. My way, my way. Your desire to control others is an attempt to make your own kingdom a designer kingdom that suits you, built around you, for you. Think about it. It's a little like being the turkey feeding off of the bull. It may get you to the top in one way or another, but it won't keep you there. We want God's gift of kingdom, dominion, and authority back, but we just don't realize what it is we're missing. We can't really put our finger on it without God's word and God's truth. We want to rule, but then is that a good desire? You see, we're wanting to get back to the Garden of Eden. We're desperate for some form of control. And so since we can't get it, we fake it with counterfeit versions of dominion. A little, a little title here, a little trophy here, a little position here, some rights, some opinions, some control. Mine, it's all mine. Let's take a look at what scripture says one more time, except this time, let's take the same verse and read it in the Amplified. Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom, God's kingdom, and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides. You see, many who go to a church building hear about the king, King Jesus, but they know nothing of God's kingdom. It's interesting that when the Bible talks about Jesus preaching the gospel and telling us to go preach the gospel, he only identified one type, one type of good news. Listen to this. He, he says it's the gospel of the kingdom. You got it. What's that mean to you and me? It's not authentically good news unless it's good news of the kingdom. Jesus, his very first recorded words in public ministry were this. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Many people want Jesus as savior, but that's all. Let's just stop there. They refuse his kingdom way because they want their way. They don't want to let go of their way. They want their way. I want Jesus as my savior, but I want to hold on to my way. I'm king. I'm the boss of my life. Nobody tells me how to vote. I the boss. I'm the boss. But to refuse the king's kingdom, listen to this, is to refuse all his benefits. There are people who call themselves Christians, but they refuse the kingdom way. So when they do that, they refuse his protection, his provision, his power, his health benefits, his welfare plan. They refuse Jesus' counsel, his wisdom, his advice, his business insurance. They refuse his strength training, his retirement plans. They refuse Jesus' education grants. They refuse his grace, his favor, his life. They refuse Jesus' mercy. Why? They want the Savior apart from his kingdom. 
They want the king independent of his kingdom. He said, seek first the kingdom of God, my way, the kingdom way. You see, when you hold the king apart from his kingdom, you hold the king out of context. Therefore, you hold the king in contempt of his kingdom. You don't want to do that. Why am I here on earth? Let's answer that question. One of the greatest pursuits of humanity is to answer the age-old quest for purpose. Why am I here on earth? Why was I ever born? What's my purpose in life? Well, believe it or not, the Bible has the answer for you. God's word is the answer. From the very beginning of time, God has given us a crystal clear assignment in his word for his glory, for his kingdom rule. Let me prove it to you and show you how this practically works, even in the greatest, the, the most adverse situation. I want you to follow me in this story. George Washington Carver, he was born into slavery in 1864. World famous inventor, world famous inventor and a hero. I think he's a hero. He became the most prominent African-American scientist of the 20th century. He tells the story that he was just a boy when another white boy told him about Jesus Christ and how to pray. He and his brother, they weren't allowed to go to church. So he crawled up in the loft, knelt down by a barrel of corn, and he asked Jesus to be the Lord of his life. The doctors, they didn't think that George would live past 21, but he credits God for raising him up. Well, imagine that, Jesus being the resurrection and the life. When other scientists and media criticized his research methodology or other Christians would come to his rescue and help encourage him to go forward, to go for it, George. He testified on many occasions that, that his faith in Jesus was the only mechanism by which he could effectively pursue and perform the art of science. Oh, this is so good. George Washington Carver was born into a culture, a worldly kingdom of division, of racial discrimination, and yet he viewed his faith in Jesus Christ, the king of all kings, as a means of destroying both the barriers of racial division and the social injustice. That's the kingdom way of thinking. George was as concerned with his students' character development as he was with their intellectual development. As a professor at Tuskegee Institute, he also taught a Bible class. George Washington Carver, born a slave in a divided South, he helped economically save the South with his agricultural inventions and advancements. He became famous, influential. He defied segregation just by being so simply essential, amazing, helpful, needed, like his Abba Father, his Heavenly Father. Once again, a reporter asked him about his success, and he said this, the secret of my success? He said, it's simple. It's found in the Bible. Oh my goodness, that's so good. Do you know the best place in the world to live? It's inside God's kingdom on the kingdom way. When you're in God's kingdom, then God's kingdom gets on the inside of you. Yes, your inner reality becomes your outer reality because whether you believe it or not, you're already living this truth right now. Your inner reality is right now in this second, your outer reality. It's steering it. Consider this for a moment. Adam fell from where? The kingdom of God. Jesus came preaching what? The kingdom of God. Are you connecting the dots here? Jesus came to earth to get us back the kingdom way. Why? So we can represent heavenly interests, the king's interests here on earth. Royalty under the king. That's why Jesus is called the king of kings. He's called the king of kings, not the king of fools or the king of sinners. Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to be an old sinner saved by grace. Look, that sounds humble, but it's a backhanded way of saying Jesus didn't really make you a new creature. That's not true. It's a passive way of saying Jesus has saved you, but left you the same. He's, you're really not reborn. Look, you're either born again, a child of God, or you're not. Which is it? You can't have it both ways. Are you still an old sinner or are you a new creature in Christ Jesus? You can't be both. The book of James says that's called being a double-minded person. You're unstable in all of your ways and you receive nothing from God. 
Choosing Jesus as king is choosing his kingdom, his kingdom way. His kingdom is a way. In fact, it is the way to life. There is no other name of royalty that can save you from your sins, only Jesus Christ. So let me give you three life-changing conclusions that we can live by. Number one, the kingdom way is God's way of doing things and being right, period. We all need a way, the way. This comes That comes from his righteousness. The world seeks fairness, reparations, worldly rights. God gives us his rightness, his family privilege to operate on earth with authority and dominion. Now, this is a big deal for many. You need a way out, a way up, a way through, a way over. Now, you can't fake God's rightness. It's mathematically perfect to the nth degree. Jesus, the king, came to give us a gift. And it's not just forgiveness. It's not just eternal life. Jesus the King came to set us free from sin for the gift of, you guessed it, His kingdom. His kingdom way. We get to inherit the kingdom of God. So, life-changing conclusion number two, the kingdom way is essential. Why? Because your true identity is empowered in His kingdom. Jesus came to redeem you to get you back from the curse, but for the blessing. And the blessing is living the kingdom way. Your identity demands a context. Just like a fish needs water, you cannot fulfill your God design living outside God's kingdom. That would be like dropping a car in the Atlantic Ocean and expecting it to perform, right? Recently, a cargo ship sunk mid-Atlantic carrying millions of dollars of Bentleys and Porsche cars to the ocean floor. Now, you don't have to be a car expert to know that those cars will not perform according to their design on the ocean floor. They won't work. They need a road. They need a way. The kingdom way is your way. The context God has designed for you to operate in full power. And now life-changing conclusion number three, God's kingdom transforms your internal reality. Jesus said, seek first. That means this must be your number one priority focus. When your repetition is a constant focus on the kingdom way, it doesn't change you. It transforms you from the inside out. Your entire approach to life begins the process of alignment with King Jesus. He does the work of extracting negative failure thinking out of you. You see, there's no room for that. That doesn't mean you won't have times when you might experience a fail or a fall, but your internal reality is always, always overriding your external circumstances. I want you to think about Joseph, the Israelite, thousands of years ago who miraculously became the prince of Egypt in the Old Testament. He was first sold into slavery, but he wouldn't let go of his inner reality. God gave him a dream, a God dream, a kingdom way of thinking. His dream was of being royalty, of being a prince. Even the prison couldn't strip the kingdom way of thinking out of him. He could still see the stars and have an aligning with his life. That's the kingdom way at work. That's that inner reality becoming the outer reality. His inside was always moving to the outside. It's a process. Everything God does is a process, but it's sure and it's true. Gunder Berkland, he was just a, born in the late 1800s. He was born in Norway, and at the age of two, he contracted polio. His parents put him in a wooden box and pulled him around in it because he couldn't walk constantly surrounded with words of death, defeat, no hope of living a normal life. But then he began to follow Jesus at an early age. And at the age of seven, he was placed in front of a mirror and the Lord gave him a vision of himself standing there. He gave him an inner reality vision of himself standing there in that box in front of the mirror, but standing without the box. So he began rocking that box back and forth until finally he tipped it over. His parents heard the commotion. They put him back in the box, but he kept getting out of the box. They scolded him, even spanked him, but he kept breaking out of the box. Before long, he began to crawl, and eventually he began to walk. He outlived every member of his family and became one of the 10 wealthiest people in the city of Seattle, Washington. He spent the rest of his life telling people, you don't have to live in the box either. Get out of the box. Some of us live in a box we've made for ourselves, 
a mental construct, like a steel cage that's a hybrid of our experiences, our traditions, our beliefs, our wounds, our grievances, our pain. But you're not gonna go anywhere in that box, my friend. You were designed for the kingdom way, the kingdom way of living. Pastor Stephen, I wanna get out of the box. Well, you can get out right now with Jesus' help. Come on out and be free. Be free from your ways, your opinions, your dogma. Be free in Jesus' name for God's kingdom way of living. You got to come to Jesus and you can do that right now. You need a way, my friend. You were made, you were created to be on the way, the kingdom way. Maybe you feel like you were born into the wrong system, the wrong kingdom, the wrong family. Maybe you just feel like things never work out for you. They just never work out for me. Well, that's why Jesus called his good news the good news of the kingdom way. He said, repent for the kingdom of God. God's way is here. Change your mind. That's what he was saying. Change your way of thinking. The gospel of Jesus, the good news of Jesus is the good news of God's kingdom. God's way. You can move the entire sum of your life over into the context of God's kingdom by using your delegated authority right now. That's right. Only you have the authority to give your life to Jesus. So pray this with me and give Jesus access to all of your life. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. You are the way for me into God's kingdom. Forgive me of all my sins. You died on the cross for me. You rose up from the grave. Come into my heart now. Be the Lord of my life. Direct me, Lord Jesus. Give me your kingdom benefits in your precious name. Amen.